good he's been. Uh, tell him how kind he has been to you. Come on and give him a praise. Hallelujah. 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 Oh God, we thank you. We thank you because you did not deal with us according to our last bad decision. But you have given us grace and you have given us mercy. And for this we say thank you. We thank you for our pastor and his wife, Lord God. We ask that you preserve and keep right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for our founder. I ask that you preserve and keep right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord God, it's our simple prayer, Lord God, that you restore unto the man of God what he is getting ready to pour out unto your people, Lord God. Restore unto him from the crown of his head to the very soles of his feet, Lord God. Let him not leave here weak. Let him not leave here tired. Let him not leave here in fatigue, Lord God. But give him strength, Lord God, for the assignment that is that hand, Lord God, and it is our simple prayer that you shake this place, Lord God. Let no one leave the same way that they came, Lord God. Make good become better, and make better become great, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus and Lord God, we ask that someone will be healed, someone will be set free, Lord God, and someone will have deliverance in this place. I don't hear nobody pray, Lord God. We ask right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus, uh, that you shake cancer, you shake heart attacks, uh, you shake strokes, uh, you shake diabetes uh, in the mighty name of Jesus uh, and have your way. Uh, and if you know God to do it, uh, don't wait till the battle is over, but open your mouth uh, and give them glory like it's already, like it's already, like it's already done. Uh, don't wait till the battle is over, but magnify them right now. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. As the men approach the pulpit, as the men approach the pulpit, we do honor the Lord because he is good. He is great and greatly to be praised. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. As we celebrate our mothers, we know that there are so many emotions that can come from days like this. So for just a moment, could you just go to someone and celebrate with them? Could you hug a mother? Could you hug a sister? Could you hug a brother? And just celebrate with them today. As God is here with us, God is here with me. God is here with you. God is here with us as we celebrate such a beautiful day that the Lord has given us. And the scripture says, and her children arise and call her blessed. It doesn't cost us anything to show love to each other. So glad to see you here. And so glad for precious memories that we have of amazing women who have graced our lives and left a lasting impact and a bloodline of faith. Gracious Father, we ask for your divine intervention in the challenging situations we face. Manifest breakthroughs that reflect your power and your love. Our Father, intervene with your wisdom as we make decisions that affect our lives and impact the lives of others. Lead us in the straight path that develop our spiritual growth and create sustained positive change that reflect a touch from you and our declaration simply declares we declare yes. that this is the year we will hear you more clearly and love you more deeply no distractions will deter deter us from our persistent pursuit of you we declare that everything God planned for us will come to pass Every attempt to intercept or delay his purpose is canceled 
in the mighty name of Jesus. And we declare, I love this part, that over and over and over again in the year of 2024, we will testify God has done it again. And his purpose has been fulfilled in our lives. We declare it, we decree it, and it is so. And so it is. Selah. Put your hands together for Jesus as we welcome the men of vision. Right 
love you and tell them it's going to be all right. Tell them everything is going to be all right. Come on, clap your hands.
out of this service, somebody gonna get a miracle. I'm looking for the section. I said, I believe that before we leave here today, somebody gonna get a breakthrough. Oh, glory be to God. If you got that kind of faith, point at one more person and say, neighbor, things are turning around for you. Just tell them it's turning. won't always be like this. The Lord will perfect that concerning you. And sooner or later, it's going to turn in your favor. I just believe it. Anybody got enough faith to believe? Things are turning. Yeah. I just got a feeling. Anybody got an itch of suspicion that today might be my day? It's turning around for me. Yeah. I'm saved and sanctified. Hey, Amen. I got the Holy Ghost and I feel all right. Amen. Glory be to God. Yeah, glory be to God. Come on, brush your neighbor's shoulder off and say, it's all for you. Whatever that is, tell them it's all for you. And if they don't shout, that means they don't want it to come off them. Tell them it's all for you. Now it's all for you. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Since I laid my burden down. And I don't know what you came to do, but I came to give him glory. 
I said, I came to clap my hand. I came to stump my feet. I came to give God all the praise. He's worthy. I said, he's worthy. Is there anybody here know God is worthy to be praised? Amen. As I look back over my life, and I think things over. I can truly say that I've been blessed. As a matter of fact, the Lord is blessing me right now. I wish somebody opened up their mouth and said, the Lord is blessing me right now. I get joy when I think about what the Lord has done for me. Don't you know the joy of the Lord is your strength? I see two hands in the back. I said, don't you know the joy of the Lord is your strength, not maybe, but it is my strength. Amen. The joy of the Lord. I still got joy. We don't know what to shout over. I said, in spite of what you're dealing with, I still got joy. I didn't ask you if you were happy. I want to know if you still got your joy. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. And the world can't take it away. Still got joy. Still got joy. After all, all that I've been through, I still, I still got joy. 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 After all that I've been through, I still, I still got joy. I've been trying to find the section I want to join today. I said, I'm looking for the section I want to join today. I might come on your road, Yoshi. I see you. I still got joy. Still got joy. After all that I've been through, I still, still got joy. Still got joy. Still got joy. Still got joy. After all that I've been through, I still got joy. You can believe what you just said.
your mother is resting in Jesus clap for her come on we're gonna celebrate hey man she's resting in Jesus all is well hallelujah glory be to God this is the day that the Lord has made he's commanded us to rejoice and be glad Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. He's called us to come together one more time. I don't know who that is. Who is that right now? Who are you? Evangelist? Evangelist? I don't know. I just looked at you. I just want you to know there's a head spins of protection around you. Right the Lord just told me he's protecting you. Bless the Lord for the mother of glory, Dr. Myra C. Warner. Amen. That's my natural mother. God bless you. Love you. Happy Mother's Day. Thank God for all of our ministers, our elders, our deacons, our missionaries, prayer warriors, saints, and friends. Amen. Everybody lay a hand on yourself and repeat after me with some vigor and vitality. I am somebody. Come on, say it like you mean it. I am important. You are important, and we love you, and we need you to survive. Amen. Your Bible is open to Mark chapter 5. We bless God for Move the men of vision and power. Sing it for us today. Amen. Come on, let's get a men another round of applause. They did a wonderful job. I just want to tell you that all is well. Your Bible 
Bible is open to Mark chapter 5. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this day, for this is the day that you have made. God bless you. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. And God, we come to you right now, as humble as we know how to share a word with you, with your people. God, let somebody be empowered. Let somebody be enlightened. Let somebody be encouraged for such a time as this. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. And what a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. And God, we're all standing here in the need of prayer. Prayer changes absolutely everything. And God, somebody needs to know right now that it's going to be all right. And Lord, we, we thank you because when you are glorified, the enemy becomes horrified. Because somebody will be sanctified. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And God, we ask that even now, that you rest and reign in this sacred place. That absolutely nobody leaves the same way they came. I command you, in the name of Jesus, to be healed, be delivered and be set free and god we thank you for what you're doing right now in Jesus' name we pray amen mark's gospel chapter five mark's gospel chapter five verse number 25 says now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians she had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately. Somebody shout immediately. The fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and, and said, who touched? Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging you, and you say, who touched me? And he looks around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well go in peace and be healed of your affliction you may be seated in the presence of our conquering king and he said to her daughter your faith has made you well go in peace and be healed of your affliction and I want to preach today simply on um, your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you well. And I want you to ease over and tell the neighbor, say, neighbor, stay focused. Your faith is about to free you. Have you ever 
had an issue that has defined you. Something that has hindered you and sapped your life of its strength. Perhaps a habit, a time of overwhelming grief, a moment when you didn't know what to do, an unscheduled event that almost wiped you out, Come on, bitch. or maybe even addiction that has stolen your identity, well. damaged your relationships, well, well. wounded your family, drained your finances, crushed your hope, dreams, and aspirations, or made you feel powerless and insignificant. And we know what it means to worry because we, we worry about ourselves, about a job loss. You worry about a terminal illness. Or sometimes you, you worry simply surviving traffic on your way home. There are times when we worry about somebody else. A child who is consistently making poor decisions, it, it'll make you worry. A friend going through a difficult situation, it, it, it'll make you worry. That your parents are getting older, it, it'll make you worry. And in these situations, we re recognize that something appears to be wrong, but being anxious is a negative state. For example, when we tell somebody, I'm worried, they immediately recognize that we are not doing well. It's like telling somebody, I'm bleeding. And that phrase isn't positive under any circumstance because it's a phrase that often is uttered in surprise and dismay. Like bleeding, anxiety causes us pain and steals our spiritual strength. So why does anxiety steal my spiritual strength? Because our spiritual strength derives from a person. And that person is Jesus. Somebody holler Jesus. And so the life of a believer is a life of trusting and resting in him. All right, all right. And so when we fail to do that, our strength begins to fail. And then we fail to live by faith. And not only that, but when we don't trust God, we trust someone or something else. We trust our money. We, we trust in our family. Or it sounds strange, but we may even trust in nothing because we'll tell ourselves the lie that there is nothing trustworthy at all and if you get to that point it becomes easily to give up and so we become practical philosophers and spiritual spiritual cynics and then this misplaced trust and the lack of faith it will drain you slowly drop by drop we grow spiritually weaker. And in the end, all anxiety is, is a trying of your faith. So how can we stop this bleeding? And this is where we often get off track because we try to stop the bleeding ourselves. When in fact, what you need is a doctor yes, sir. Yes, sir. and this doctor cannot just be any old doctor uh -huh. they must be a physician capable of healing our broken hearts right. yes. and thankfully our God is just that yes. and I'm telling you right now he can and he will, he will. stop yes. the bleeding yes. Can I tell you that health is not restored by drugs because drugs cannot rebuild cells. 
Drugs only deal with the symptoms, but they never address the source. And many times we are in church to only deal with the symptoms of our issues, but we never get to the source. So it's easy, it's easy to talk about people. It's easy to run your mouth about people who fornicate. But can I tell you, that's a symptom. But you have never addressed the source that they don't really know what love is. Yeah, we can deal with the symptom. Y'all can deal with the symptoms of me overspending. But you've never dealt with the source of me feeling inadequate or having low self-esteem. Yes, Reverend, yeah, it's easy to preach about alcohol because that's only a symptom. But you've never dealt with the source that somebody is depressed. And so can I tell you that the church is not just here to address symptoms. But it is here to deliver the source. And I need you to know, ladies and gentlemen, God doesn't just deal with the symptoms of your struggle. Because that's the difference between shallow, insignificant people and people who have some substance. Because the people who really don't know you, who really haven't taken the time to understand who you are, who can't walk a step in your shoes. They will judge you off of your symptoms when they don't understand the source of your pain. And so can I tell you, I want to challenge you right now, before you put your mouth on somebody about what they got going on, you got to take the time to pray about what the source is of their brokenness really is. And I am now in the circumference of the text because Jesus is now flowing in holistic ministry. Modeling before the church that saving souls is not enough if we neglect the body. And as a consequence, why it is that he has been preaching he now takes a turn on his way to Jairus' house. And because Jairus has a daughter who is sick unto death, please hear this, she's only 12 years old. And watch what Jesus says. He does not say, bring her to me. Jesus says, I'm coming to your house. God help me. And I know it's getting ready to mess with some of us because in this text, the woman comes to Jesus but the child doesn't have to come. Oh God, which speaks to a deep level because as for me and my house, I found the church. We will serve the Lord. And sometimes you got to go around your own house and make a declaration out loud. If you going to live under this roof, we all going to serve the same God. Because you can't be in my house and stay sick. And I need for somebody to be encouraged, even right now, that even while you are here at church, Jesus is on his way to stir up somebody who you left at the house. Every spirit in them that told them that worshiping God is not a priority. God! Getting ready to shake them up. Lord, please go into my house right now. Shake who is ever there. Please touch somebody right now. Somewhere. And so Jesus is on his way to the house. And while en route, a woman appears. A woman shows up who has, Bible calls it, an issue of blood. And this is critical, ladies and gentlemen. She has an issue of blood that she has been hemorrhaging for 12 long years. 
And now under the Levitical law, if she has an issue of blood, she is to be set apart for seven days. For seven days, she cannot even sit in a chair. If she sits in a chair, that chair has to be placed outside because it is now contaminated. If she sleeps on the bed, the sheets got to be replaced and set outside for seven days. Please hear what I'm telling you. Why it is that she is going through this, she is not to be touched. You cannot be intimate or be touched. So watch what happens. She is dealing with 12 years of not getting a hug. She's gone through 144 months that if she is married, she hadn't been touched by her husband. 12 years, if she has children, she can't even pick them up. Hmm. She can't go to the game. She cannot go to the school functions. Why? Because the people see it. Because you are in this condition, you are not to mingle with the general population. And so my question for us today is, um, why can't we just love people in spite of what they might be dealing with? Because the love of God is so heavy and alive in me. If we come in contact, the Jesus in me will say that you are easy to love. And so with this level of pain, blood is flowing continuously. So this woman must be bent over. She's bloated. She's in pain. And here it is. She can't even go to church. And according to the Mayo Clinic, this disease is caused by uterine fibroids. Thyroid dysfunction. I'm coming. Ovarian cyst. Uterine polyps. And even cancer. And so this woman has all of this going on inside of her. And she keeps on going to the doctor. And the doctor's only diagnosis is that she is obviously bleeding. Because the only thing that they address are her symptoms. So they keep on prescribing pills. They keep telling her to drink plenty of water. Y'all don't hear me. They, they keep telling her to just get some rest. But they don't deal with the real source. And here's your shout. Let me tell you again. They are not dealing with the real source. I'm coming to get you. Because after 4,383 days of not being able to stand up straight, not being able to sleep through the night, having headaches and nosebleed. Did I just tell y'all that's 4,383 days. And after I've been dealing with this for 4,383 days, you mean to tell me you don't have no deeper revelation than that? Because it's obvious that I'm bleeding. And only to discover that this kind of bleeding is not because of cancer. It is not because of fibroids. This type of bleeding is not because of ovarian cysts. It is not because of polyps. But you are going through all of this because life has stressed you out. So the stress on you is making your body break down. So that now your body won't stop itself from bleeding. And I need to be informed, we got to be informed that you don't even understand that most of your physical diseases are connected to emotional issues. 
And the enemy knows that if he can mess with your heart and mess with your mind, then your body will begin to break down. But I came under the power of the Holy Ghost to speak to somebody in here to tell you right now, whatever stress has been on you, if you can just give God glory right now, he is getting ready to lift the weight of the stress that you have been carrying. Would you lean over and tell your neighbor, the stress is coming off of you. And God help me, they didn't shout. Tell somebody, tell them, say the stress is coming off of you. I'm looking for who's going to shout over. I'm, I'm talking to you. I said, the stress is coming off of you. I'm talking to the person all the way in the back. The stress is coming off of you. I wish I could find help way over here. I'll see you back there. I said, the stress is coming off of you. And I don't even know what you've been stressed about. I don't know what's been robbing you of your sleep. I don't know what the devil has put in your head. But by the grace of Jesus Christ, the stress is coming off of you. And I'm thankful. I'm thankful to, some, to God for some of y'all who have not been stressed out about anything. I'm so glad. I wish you'd give me the secret. But for me and somebody else in your area, God help me. Can I just identify? I said for me and somebody else in your area. Yeah, my, my nerves been a little bad. God help me. Something has shaken me so that I can't even sing sometimes to keep myself calm. But I came to tell somebody in who will shout over it right now. There is peace in the valley. That God is getting ready to speak to your heart. And he's going to calm your spirit. God help me. I said the Lord is taking the stress off of you right now. Let me tell you again. I said he's taking the stress off of you right now. Because it's the stress that's affecting your body. God help me. It, it, it's the stress that's messing you up. Stress about what's going on in the house. Stress about your family. Stress about your finances. Stress that's going on at your place of employment. But I want to enlighten you right now that 75% of your stress is not even yours. Wow. Jesus. God help me. I need to talk to the person on the end of your role. Let me tell you again. I said 75% your stress is not even yours. And you're sitting around somebody who's going through a rough issue in their life because they are stressed about somebody else. And, and the stress of worrying about somebody else has now affected you. Y'all got quiet because I know that we in church and we acting like we got it all together. And I want to help you shout on your road. Let me tell you again, you're stressed about somebody else because you are fasting for them and they're eating up everything inside. I found somebody y'all are waking up now. <laughs> you, you at the house on your knees in your prayer closet praying for them and they out at the party. God help me. Can I tell somebody in this room who will shout with your pastor? I want to enlighten you. Jesus died. And because he died, 
you don't have to. Bible says he came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I wish you'd just tell somebody in your area, just tell them live, 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 live. God help me. I thought y'all helped me go through there. Let me look at you. I'm going to say Leo, Leo, Leo. He already died. And you don't have to die over that. God help me. And some of us in the room, we may never be a millionaire. You may never drive your dream car. You may never live in your dream house. But Lord, even now, Will you just make me stress free? God help me. I'm coming. I see you. I said, Lord, would you just make me stress free? Take this weight off of me. Take this burden away. I don't like it. God help me. Not sleeping too well. And I've had enough of these folks at my job. Lord! Take this stress off of me. God help me. God help me for the 12 of us who will shout out loud. Lord, take this stress off of me. Matter of fact, I ain't even embarrassed. I'm stressed all the way out. Lord, take this off of me. Y'all sitting in church like you're in the witness protection program. But Lord, take it off of me. God help me. If you be honest, he'll take it off for you. God help me. Nose bleeds, headaches, cramps, in pain for 12 years. And I'm getting ready to come around the corner so we can go and have brunch. And the um, Bible says she heard that Jesus is coming. He's not even there yet, but she, she, she heard that Jesus is en route to the building. Bible says um, she thought to herself. And I want to tell you right now, I want to tell you and encourage you that you're already on the road to healing when you start thinking correctly when you start making some better decisions God help me when you get to that point you realize I am not as sick as I used to be because there's some stuff that if you had caught me at the wrong time I would have fallen for it but, but I thought to myself, if I could just get to Jesus. And some of us have been going through hell and high water. And you almost didn't come to church today. But something dropped in your spirit. If I could just get to Jesus. That things are going to get better for me would you just lay hand on your name and just say better 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 god help me come on let wake him up say better it's on the way because there's no way in the world that i'm going to stand in the presence of god and leave out of here the same way i came things are about to get better glory be to god Things are about to get better for me. After all this bleeding, you got to understand if you're bleeding that long, she's dehydrated. After all this bleeding, her headaches are pounding. After all that bleeding, trying to stand up straight becomes a chore. After all this bleeding, you got to understand that breathing easy is hard work. Watch this.
darkness. And, and now you want me to walk? I've been going through this for 4,383 days. And now you want me to walk? Walk it, walk it. For 144 months, I've been dealing with this. And now, you want me to walk? Some of you are missing it, but I realize that a lot of people are missing what I just said because here it is. You have never been sick for real. That's right. Can I just be the poster child for that? Let me say it again. I realize that you couldn't help the pastor shout because you had never been sick for real. And you ought to thank God that you got a reasonable portion of your, I wish I could find it, of your health and your strength. And there's three people on your road who didn't shout because they have never been sick for real. I didn't ask you if you ever stumped your toe. We're not talking about catching the cold. But, but, but if you ever been sick for real, God help me, can I just help somebody? Because when you get sick for real, sometimes you just want to be left alone. Hallelujah. So you got to deal with this woman's mental state right now. I'm hunched over, I'm bloated, I'm bleeding, I got a migraine headache, and I'm risking it all right now to walk through a crowd. God help me. And here's what happens when you get desperate for your breakthrough. Because I want to get healed. And I heard that Jesus was passing by. I wish I could find the 15 of y'all who I came for today. I said, I need to be healed. And I heard that Jesus was passing by. And, and, and so be, because I heard that Jesus was in route. I had to make sure that I was in the proper position to get what I need. So yeah, I'm going through a lot, but watch this. She took off walking. Bible does not tell us how far she walked. And some of y'all won't even walk to your own car. But Bible does not tell me how far she walked. And, and she began to walk. Because she has an emergency situation. And she began to understand that my focus cannot be on the crowd. Because my focus has got to stay on Jesus. Because when you have gotten to the place that you feel like enough is enough, And uh, now you get to the point where I'm not worried about what people are saying. Not worried about what somebody is looking at me. I could care less what you think about. As a matter of fact, I'm so wounded that um. Uh, I didn't even notice that you've been looking at me crazy. Uh, 
Cause I got too much on me That I need To get off of me And all I want to do If I could just touch Him love His God I just believe that uh, I will be made whole. And I came in God's house today because I've made up in my mind that if I can just touch Jesus, and for those of you who are intimidated by the crowd, can I tell you that you aren't sick enough? But for those of you who had moments in your life that you had to crawl out of the bed, you had to force yourself to even get dressed, but you told yourself, if I can just get to Jesus. If you have any strength left, would you just open up your mouth and lift up your hand and cry out to God and say, Lord, I'm in your presence and now I am ready to feel your power. Is there anybody here who came to feel his power? Let's try it again. Say, Lord, I'm in your presence. And I'm ready to feel your power. And I know most of us can't see it. But I want to caution you. To understand that beneath your nice outfit, that is somebody who looks real good sitting next to you right now, who has been bleeding for a long time. Can I tell you that the issue is so heavy? God help me. That they can't even maintain a healthy relationship. Things are so heavy. There are times in their life that can't even look you in the face. Because I've gone through so much. Been bleeding for a while that there are even times when you don't even know how to respond to your own children been bleeding for so long that uh, I don't even know what normalcy looks like because I have adjusted to this level of pain headache nosebleed feeling bloated and sometimes not even knowing if I'm coming or if I'm going but the spirit whispered in your ear that while you were asleep in the middle of the night the spirit says your faith has made you well would you lean over and tell somebody you've been through too much not to get what you need. I said, lean over and tell somebody you've been through too much not to get what you need. And God is getting ready to heal you. I said, God is getting ready to heal you. I said, God is. Yeah. He's getting ready to heal you before the service is over. Would you lean over and tell, tell a neighbor, God is getting ready to heal you. 
So go ahead and don't leave without getting what you need. Bible said that this lady went to many doctors, spent all she had, yeah. And so you got to realize that if she'd been going to doctor after doctor after doctor for 12 years, can I help the church shout today? It means that uh, this woman was not broke. Bible said it took her 12 years to spend all she had. I wish I had somebody with a little bit of faith to touch your own pocketbook and touch your pocket and say, Lord, stretch my money. I said, where is your faith? I said, Lord, stretch. And if you got a faith like I got faith, I'm coming, Sister Tanisha. You'll never be broke another day in your life. I wish I had 15 people to jump up real quick and just reach up and grab it. And get what you need when the praises go up. Yeah. says she spent all she had and what didn't make sense in the text is that I spent all of my money 12 years no telling how many doctors I have seen but what doesn't make me shout is a Bible lets me see that uh, she got worse. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Before things got better. And I feel like I need to tell somebody in your row that if you feel like things have gotten worse, now you're in the proper position for prayer to be answered. Ladies and gentlemen, I have been living a while and I have discovered that marching bands have practice. Football teams have practice. Choirs have practice. But can I tell you, I don't want no doctor practicing on me. Because when it comes to my health, I need perfecting. God help me. And the Lord told me to tell somebody, he heals the doctor above your doctor. And if you ever find your way to Jesus, Jesus says, I am not practicing, but um, I am perfecting. And I need somebody in this room who can turn around real quick and say, the Lord is perfecting me. I may not be where I should be, but I thank God that I am not what I used to be. Because God is not practicing on me, but he is perfecting that which is concerning me. Would you ease into your neighbor and say, neighbor, God is perfecting that which concerns you. Because he is not practicing yet how to heal me. He already knows how to do it. He's not practicing how 
to deliver me because he already knows how to get the job done. Does anybody know him for yourself? Because he already knows how to get it done. Do you know him to be a doctor in your sick room? I wish I find witness. He is a lawyer in your courtroom. I don't need nobody practicing on me, but I need somebody who can make me whole again. And some of y'all don't even know who you are sitting around because they don't look like what they are going through. Because God yeah, has them covered. Come on, Ryan, let's go. And when God anointed Jesus, he already knew it was going to be millions who needed to be healed, be delivered, yeah, and be set free. So here comes a woman, yes, Lord, who hadn't even been to church in 12 years. She's been suffering for 4,383 days. And she says, I don't have the power yet, but if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know that the hem is the bottom of the robe, which means if I can just get the residue of what is on Jesus, it'll transfer over into my life. And whatever is on him, he will heal the brokenness in me. Is there anybody who doesn't mind right now touching him with your praise? I said open up your mouth and with everything that you got left, shout right now. Because everything in your life is getting ready to be made whole. If you can just touch him, whatever yeah, has been stressing you out, it's got to come off of him. Is there, is there anybody who got strength enough to reach up and touch him? Touch him with your praise. Touch him with your holler. Touch him with your heart. Touch him with your running. Touch him with your spitting. Touch him with your dancing. Anybody here who's not ashamed? To go for it. Lean over. Tell your neighbor. Say, get what you need. Come on, tap three people and say, get what you need. I wish I had some radical praises to get what you need. It's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. I wish I had some help in here. Thank y'all very much. But somebody ought to be pressing, pressing through the crowd, pressing through the crowd, pressing through the crowd. Somebody ought to be pressed. Somebody ought to be pressed. Somebody ought to be. Somebody 
Somebody ought to be pressing. Somebody ought to be pressing. I said somebody ought to be. I feel like pressing my way.
the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the power.